Welcome to the God Farm, your God Farm. This is Al. At the God Farm, you're going to learn the meaning of your life and your destiny with God for eternity. You're going to learn what's been stopping you from the true meaning of life and how to get past those areas onto your forever journey so you can be face to face with God. The Rise of the Nuns. Um, I read a little while ago that they said Canada over the next 10 years would lose 9,000 churches, which is basically makes up a third of all the churches in Canada. Uh, another article I read said thousands of churches in Europe are closing. Um, another one said, uh, Americans with no religion increases by 266% over the last three decades. So what's going on? Is Christianity experiencing a mass extinction? Um, here's a general uh, social survey. It said people with no religion, known as nuns, N-O-N-E-S, among statisticians account for over 23% of the U.S. population, while Catholics make up 23% and Evangelicals account for just over 22%. In other words, the, the nuns are now officially the largest religious group in the United States. So, so what is a nun? Nuns are people who report no religious affiliation. This title can also encompass descriptive titles such as atheists, humanists, evolutionists, and agnostics. Um, statistics say today nearly 4 in 10 young adults, 18 to 29, are religiously unaffiliated which is three times the unaffiliated rate, which is at 13% among seniors who are 65 years of age and older. While previous generations were also more likely to be religiously unaffiliated in their 20s, young adults today are nearly four times as likely as young adults a generation ago to identify as religiously unaffiliated. In 1986, for example, only 10% of young adults claimed no religious affiliation. And now we're, we're up uh, over 40%. To go from 10% to 40% to, to today is, is really a, a, an absolutely colossal shift. That's, you know, mere just over 30 years. And even the young people that are, are involved in a church do not seem very keen on sharing their faith with others. According to one of uh, uh, one survey, 47%, which is almost half of millennials that consider themselves and call themselves a practicing Christian, they actually believe it's wrong to share the gospel with others. That's almost half. And a new study from um, the Barna Group uh, which conducts surveys, uh, they, they compile data on Christian trends in America and American culture. And a staggering number, they also found that American millennials think evangelic, evangelicism is wrong. Not that they won't do it, they think it's wrong. But really, is, is a lack of evangelism the reason for this rise of nuns out there, those who, have, who say, I'm not affiliated with any belief system. I say no, it's it's not because of evangelism. Religion is the rotten root that's planted and tended to by Satan. We ex if you examine the reasons that people say they, they left church to become a nun, they say church isn't relevant in today's world. And this is from statistics. They've 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 surveyed people, why did you leave the church? And, and these are their reasonings for why they left. Another one was 
they experienced sexual abuse by priests and other leaders. Another reason people leave and become a nun is they have no sense of connection to where, to where they belong. The connection really is they have no connection with God. Another of them said that it's just they're turned off. It's just a bunch of rules and traditions, and they're not interested anymore. Others, they found that the the people that uh, attended these church groups were, were hypocrites. Another uh, another one said that the leaders were very controlling, and and uh, they didn't like that at all. They said uh, another reason was too many political and social issues going on uh, at the church where they attended. Another one was false doctrines that they didn't like. Lot said it was boring. Another, uh, others said that they they uh, they were always after their money. And last but not least, people left because it was spiritually dead. Notice, no one says in these statistics that they left Christianity because they don't like miracles, signs, and wonders anymore. Notice that no one said they left this church group that they were involved with. They left because they they don't like visiting with God in heaven anymore. Notice that no one here said that they've decided they they don't want to be a saint, a ruler, a royal priest, and join heir with Christ anymore. We didn't see any of those reasons in here for people leaving Christianity and leaving God, saying they're not interested in really, they're not interested in God anymore. Religion doesn't want you knowing about or doing uh, activities in in the spiritual realm involving God. Satan doesn't want people knowing about or doing God stuff. And. I can relate to the nuns. As I walked away from the religious church for most of these reasons back in 1969, I poked my nose in here and there several times over the decades with groups that said they were different, and initially they looked different. Uh, But after a while, you just find too much leaven in there, and you have to walk off. And Matthew 16 Six, Jesus said to them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. 1 Corinthians 5, 6 to 7, Your glorying is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Therefore, purge out the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, since truly you are unleavened. And Galatians 5, 9 says the same thing. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. So what is leaven? Leaven is just a little bit of some person's junk, their religious junk, their made-up man-made doctrines, doctrines of devils. Uh, they, they mix that junk in with God's, some of God's truth and some of God's standards. And um, this is what they, you know, their denomination comes up with. Uh, here's what we follow. And we don't follow that, and we don't like that, and we don't do this that God said. We don't, no, we don't do any of that stuff. People will come up with various, even laughable reasons f- for being involved with compromising groups, with wrong people, um, being involved in made-up doctrines, phony belief systems in their life. Uh, we, Rhoda and I, we, we've even heard people say, well, God told them that it's okay to carry on with alternate standards or compromising with him. That's just utter nonsense. God never, ever contradicts his own word. He doesn't expect us to contradict his word. He doesn't expect us to compromise with it. Keeping seamlessly harmless religious pets in our lives doesn't assist in our relationship with God, nor our place in heaven, nor our destiny with him. Religion isn't God's will. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 10, 
your kingdom come, your will be done as it is in heaven. If you really believe that what God says here, then then do it. Some people say to me, I should have more grace. Well, that's not my job. They say that I should not be judgmental. Well, one of my jobs as a ruler and royal priest is to confront heresy, 1 Corinthians 5.12. Other people say, well, Al, you're too black and white. No, God is black and white. I just go with his standards, not mine or someone else's standards. Um, one time I went uh, in the spirit to my chateau in heaven to spend time with Father and Jesus. And one of the one of the things that Jesus said to me was, uh, many will tr- reject what we hand to them. Walk away from them and move forward. Do not linger with fools. Their price will be met. Goes along with Proverbs 26, 4. Do not answer a fool according to his folly, folly lest you also be like him. And in Isaiah 32, 6. For the foolish person will speak foolishness, and his heart will work iniquity. To practice ungodliness, to utter error against the Lord, to keep the hungry unsatisfied, and he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. People who are spiritual beings yearn yearn to operate in supernatural spiritual realms. If pe- people don't get this from uh, Christians, if people that call themselves Christians, they're, they'll, they'll go to the occult. They'll experiment with other religions uh, or, or become a frustrated nun. Waiting for God in heaven until we die is a false religious doctrine. People can and should be walking in their full inheritance now. Like Jesus said, we're sitting now with him, uh, Ephesians 2, 6. We're raised up together and we're sitting together in the heavenly places right now with Christ Jesus. The religious church and their leaders keep people from God in heaven with their religious ways. God says religious practitioners are hell-bound. Matthew 23, 13 to 15. Jesus said, But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers. Therefore, you will receive greater condemnation. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you travel land and sea to win one proselyte, and when he is one, you make him twice as much a son of hell as yourselves. Religious church leaders are commandants of death camps. People are fed artificial doctrines. They're fed placebos. They're fed compromise. They're fed heresies as meals. They're controlled by entertaining con artists with flesh-driven agendas. They masquerade as representatives of God. You can find these commandants and death camps uh, online, in church groups, home groups, conferences, seminars, webinars, podcasts, TV, radio, books, and DVDs are all over the place. Most prisoners choose to stay in these death camps, although they are free to leave. Those who leave may walk out into a different death camp, into the occult, into New Age, into Islam, into Buddhism, Hinduism, into Judaism, or they may leave to become a nun nothing and do whatever they want in life few God's word says find the narrow way to him and his truth those who stay in these religious death camps wither away their lives until they die yet even physical death doesn't set them free as Jesus said in his uh, in the word You have to liberate yourself from all death camps. Liberate, uh, do prison breaks for others who are imprisoned. Remove 
all the religious garments. Get rid of the religious pets. Religion is, is not God. Christianity isn't becoming extinct. Fake Christianity is becoming extinct. That's what the rise of the nuns. A statistic out there says somewhere between 6,000 and 10,000 churches in the United States are die off and close up every year. That means just this week there's going to be a hundred churches in the United States that close for good. I say let them go. Let religion die off. Let God take over in each person's life. Evangelism will take care of itself when people see God manifest in and around true Christians. That's what you want to be doing. You want to be you want to be demonstrating God's power. As you speak his word, you demonstrate miracle signs and wonders to reveal the true God to people out there, the nuns and those following fake religions, those who are, who are in fake Christianity groups, so that they see, they see God operating through you. They, they recognize that here's what it's all about. Here's the meaning of life. Here's what I need to find out for myself. Not you're not looking for people that are going to be following you and that you become sort of an idol or something. You want people to understand you are representing. You are a royal priest, a saint, child of God. You're representing God, the kingdom of heaven, and the kingdom of God. And you're showing them and revealing God to people. You're helping these people. You're developing. You're uh, uh, building up your treasures in heaven. And you're going, um, you're showing these people what, what the tr who the true God is, so that they can come out of their wilderness and come out of their these death camps, and they can come out of uh, wandering around. And many are searching, even lots of them are searching, still searching out there. They want to find the truth. They want to find the true God. They want to find what's real out there. They want to find the true meaning of life. So when you operate in um, with God's power, you're revealing. You're not just you're not just babbling a bunch of words out and becoming. And people just think, oh, well, you're just some some other religious person with your own theory and your own opinions about what it says here in this uh, Bible. Here, you don't you don't want to become one of them. You want to show God's power to these people. So step out and ask God to flow through you. You are the temple of God. Ask God to flow through you to not only preach and teach his word and bring to reveal himself to those who you come in contact with so that they will come to the realization of Jesus Christ and what they need to do to switch off death that's going on in their life and switch on the light and the life that they need with Jesus Christ so that they can move through this world and the next into eternity as true children of God. God bless. If you'd like to learn more about these amazing teachings that will radically change your life, please go to thegodfarm.com, scroll down, and register there. See you soon.